Okay class, today we're in section 7.2, applying exponent properties involving quotients. Before, you use properties of exponents involving products. Now, you will use properties of exponents involving quotients. Key vocabulary, power, exponent, base. Notice what happens when you divide powers with the same base. A to the fifth divided by a to the third equals a to the second. In other words, you just said 5 minus 3. Now what really happens? a to the fifth means a times a times a times a times a. That's 5 a's. On the bottom you have 3 a's. Now how many a's will cancel out? In other words, how many a's are in common? 1, 2, 3. So how many a's are left? 2. Therefore, 5 to the a to the fifth divided by a to the third would give you a to the second. Key concept. Copy down and be sure it is in your notes. Quotient of properties property. Let a be a non-zero real number and let m and n be positive integers such that m is greater than n. Words. To divide powers having the same base, subtract exponents. In algebraic terms, a to the m divided by a to the n equals a to the m minus n. Remember, a cannot be zero. Example, 4 to the 7th divided by 4 to the 2nd equals 4 to the 5th. Simplifying expressions. When simplifying powers with a numerical base, basis only, write your answers using exponents as in parts a, B, and C. Example 1, using the quotient of powers property. We have A to the 10th divided by A to the 4th. All we do is subtract. 10 minus 4 is 6. So our answer is A to the 6. Example B, we have a negative 3 to the 9th divided by a negative 3 to the 3rd. Once again, all we do is subtract. 9 minus 3 is 6. Notice that our bases are the same, so this is why we can do this. So what's our answer? Negative 3 to the 6. Example C. 5 to the 4th times 5 to the 8th. All that is divided by 5 to the 7th. First we say 5 to the 4th times 5 to the 8th is equal to 5 to the 12th. That goes back to the previous lesson where we add our exponents when multiplying with the same base. Now I have 5 to the 12th divided by 5 to the 7th. And that's going to equal to 5 to the 5th. 12 minus 7 is 5. D. 1 over x to the 4th times x to the 6th. Don't forget, there's really a 1 that's right up under that 6. There's a 1 right there. For those of us who need to see it, let me put it there for you. There's a 1 right there. So now, what is 1 times x to the 6th? That's x to the 6th. What is x times 1, x to the 4th times 1? That's x to the 4th. I'm dividing with the same base. 6 minus 4 is 2, so my answer is x to the second power. Okay, power of a quotient. Notice what happens when you raise a quotient to a power. Here we have a, to the, a over b raised to the 4th power. Well, what does that mean? That means a over b written 4 times. Once, twice, Three times, four times, with multiplication. Now what does that mean? That means we're going to add that 1 that's up there. So we get a to the 1 times a to the 1 times a to the 1 times a to the 1. That equals a to the 4th. Same thing with the b's. We come out with b to the 4th. b to the 1, b to the 1, b to the 1, b to the 1. We add b to the 4th. So in other words, a over b raised to the 4th can be rewritten as a to the 4th over b to the fourth. Also remember there's a 1 on top of that a and there's a 1 on top of that b. What's 1 times 4? 4. What's 1 times 4? 4. The example above suggests the following property of exponents known as the property of a quotient property. Key concept. Write this down. Get it in your notes. Powers of a quotient property. Let a and b be real numbers with b 
where B cannot equal zero, and let M be positive integer. Words. Define a property of a quotient. Find the power of the numerator and the power of the denominator and divide. Algebraically, a over b raised to the m equals a to the m over b to the m, where b cannot be zero. Example, three to the seventh, excuse me, three over two to the seventh is equal to three to the seventh over two to the seventh. Example two, use the power of a of a quotient property. Example two, use the power of a quotient property. A, x over y raised to the third equals x to the third over y to the third. B, a negative seven over x raised to the second power is equal to a negative seven squared over x squared. I just went from here to here. This step is repeating. All right, now what is what is a negative 7 squared, 49, and then the x squared comes along for the ride. Example 3, use properties of exponents. Now we're going to go from here, this step right here, to this step right here. From here to here. Now this is for those who are having a hard time and don't understand. But for the most part, you can go from here to right here. Here we go. We got 4 raised to the third power. 4 to the third power. What's 4 to the third power? 64. x squared to the third power. What's x squared to the third power? x to the sixth. Don't forget, we multiply. Now go to the bottom. What's 5 to the third power? That equals 125. And then what's y to the 1 raised to the third power? That's y to the third power. So that's your answer right there. All right, let's go to B. We have A squared over B raised to the fifth power. A squared over B raised to the fifth power times 1 over 2 times A to the second power. Once again, don't get intimidated. The process is pretty simple. We're going to go from here to here and then there. All right, here we go. A to the second raised to the fifth is A to the tenth. We multiply. B to the first raised to the fifth, one times five, is B to the fifth. Times what we have over here, one over two times A squared. Now, what is A to the tenth times one? A to the tenth. What is one, is a one in front of that B, times two? That is equal to two. Is there anything to multiply b to the fifth by on this side? And the answer is no. So we bring the b to the fifth down. Is there anything to multiply a to the second by on this side? And the answer is no. So we bring down a to the second. So our final answer is a to the tenth over two times a squared times b to the fifth. Okay, I said final answer. We were not quite finished yet. We still have one more step. All right, so now I have a to the tenth divided by a to the second. That's going to equal a to the eighth. Okay, and then on the bottom here, I have two times b to the fifth. 2 times b to the 5th, because the a to the 10th and the a to the 2nd, that became a to the 8th, so now that's gone. So what's left on the bottom? 2 times b to the 5th, and that's what we have. Now this is our final answer. Okay, example 4, solve a multi-step problem. Factor tree. To construct what is known as a factor tree, begin with a single segment, the trunk that is one unit long as in step zero. So this right here is the trunk. Add three shorter segments that are one half unit long to form the first set of branches as in step one. So trunk and these are the branches one, two, and three. 
then continue adding sets of successfully shorter branches so that each new set of branches is half the length of the previous set as in steps two and three. Step two, one, two, three, three sets of three. Step three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine sets of three altogether. A. Make a table showing the number of new branches at each step for steps one through four. Write the number of new branches as a power of three. B. How many times greater is the number of new branches added at step five than the number of new branches added at step two? Notice step one, number of new branches, three. What is that equal to with powers? Three to the first power. So once again, one, two, three. Step two, nine is the number of new branches. How do we get that? Three to the second power. Now notice step two, that's where the two comes from. Step one, that's where the one comes from. And it's three to the second power. How do we get that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now what would give you nine using uh, power notation? It would be three to the second power. Now notice in step three, we have 27. And 27, that will equal three to the third power. In step four, we have 81. That will give us three to the fourth power. And then I think that you know for the fifth um, step we should have for the fifth step we should have what three to the that's it fifth power okay now that's going to be explained in part B so the number of new branches added at step five is three to the fifth the new the number of new branches added at step two is three to the second so the number of new branches added at step five is three to the fifth divided by three to the second that's going to equal to 3 to the third, and 3 to the third is equal to 27. That's going to be 27 times the number of new branches added at step two. Example five, solve a real world problem. Astronomy. The luminosity in watts of a star is the total amount of energy emitted from the star per unit of time. The order of magnitude of the luminosity of the sun is 10 to the 26 watts. The star Canopus is one of the brightest stars in the sky. The order of magnitude of the luminosity of Canopus is 10 to the 30 watts. How many times more luminosity is Canopus than the sun? Solution. Luminosity of Canopus is 10 to the 30th and that's divided by the luminosity of the Sun which is 10 to the 26 10 to the 30 divided by 10 to the 26 is equal to 10 to the 4th once again we subtract 30 minus 26 will give us 4 so Canopus is about 10 to the 4th times as luminous as the Sun okay you may begin your lesson. It wasn't easy, but it was hard to get everything in within 15 minutes, five examples, but we got it done. You may start your lesson.